But what do we do when we feel anxious about things we can't control? Well, we read. We're readers. Are you on camera? Are you on the camera? So I listened to more of the Dutch house while I was driving. Oh my gosh. What's your goal, Zuzu? <laughs> What's your goal today? It, it occurs to me, I don't really even know what this book is about. And I'm also appreciating more this time the genius of Tom Hanks being the narrator. It is so good. Hello everyone, it is Monday, March 9th, and I thought I'd do a reading vlog this week. So um, this weekend my husband came home and I don't read as much when he comes home, but I did get a couple of books read and I have many more I would like to complete this week. So the first book I finished it is Leanne Moriarty's Nine Perfect Strangers. I started this on Friday night and I finished it Sunday afternoon. It's about um, nine people who book a 10 day stay at a health resort, like a remote health resort in Australia. Uh, Leanne Moriarty is an Australian author. They go there for their own unique reasons, you know, to lose weight or to rest, or um, there's a husband and wife that are going there for couples counseling. Um, there's a dad, mom, and 20-year-old daughter who are going there because they don't want to be at their home on the third anniversary that's Emily's ear coming into the camera's view. Uh, they don't want to be home on the third anniversary of the son's death. And so they've booked this trip together to the resort. So they're all there for their own individual unique reasons. And the owner of this health resort, you kind of wonder, like, is she insane or is she a genius? And then by the end, you'll get all, all the answers. I did not go into this with high expectations. You know how when you're friends with someone, if they've read the book you're looking up, their, their star review pops up on Goodreads? And my niece, Lindsay, she had read this and she rated it a two and I thought, oh no, because I think Lindsay Pye has pretty good taste in books. <laughs> so when I saw it too, I was like, oh. And it did take me a while to kind of get into this and it is a light read so if you're not in the mood for a light read or you don't like light reading don't get this <laughs> not that there aren't serious subjects that are addressed in this but the tone and the feelings you're going to have are not you know they're not gu guttural <laughs> they're, they're it's a light read for sure in my opinion um and, uh, but it was better than I thought. So for what it is, you know, this isn't literary fiction or thriller. For what it is, I think it deserves three stars in my book. So yeah, so three stars on this one. And then the other book I read, I should go get that. Right over here. <laughs> it's Annie Dillard's A Writing Life. Um, I, I don't know how I'm gonna rate this yet because I have, I have mixed feelings. This is a like, it's like essays of her opinion on the writing life. And there are some really good nuggets of uh, things she wrote in here that really just kind of speak to you. If you're interested in writing, if you're not interested in writing or authors and how they think you're probably not gonna, you're not gonna wanna pick this book up. Uh, it's very philosophical, and even though it is an extremely short read, it's not something you're gonna zip through. It's just not written or like that. It's more like poetic prose um, that you're reading. It does go off on some odd tangents here and there that I personally could have done without, but maybe upon reading it again, maybe I'd appreciate it, some of the tangents more, what I'm calling tangents. But then there are some things in here that just, I, I, I this is it's from the library. So like, I wanna get the book so I can highlight them and just have it as part of my library. I'm not sure how I'm gonna score it on Goodreads, so. 
I'll keep you posted on that. But anyway, next week I have my monthly book club. It's The Dutch House. I have already read The Dutch House. I actually, I listened to it on um, audiobook. And then Ann Patchett had come to Asheville and I went down there and bought the book and had her, she personalized it. So I went to, I lent the book to one of the ladies in the book club. So I'm going to re-listen to Tom Hanks' narration of The Dutch House for next Tuesday's book club. I started it this morning because I had some cleaning chores to do. So I, I listened to it for about an hour and then like um, while I was getting ready this morning. And um, also one of the ladies from the book club gave me a book to read and I'd like to get it back to her um, when I see her next Tuesday. It's called My Last Days as Roy Rogers. So I need to read this. And then of course I have all those great library books still to read. Um, City of Girls by Liz Gilbert. Peace Like a River, uh, The Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion, and if I get to it, The Night Circus, which I read eight years ago, but I would like to reread it. So I have, I have a lot to read this week, and I'm going to take you guys along. So it, it occurs to me, I don't really even know what this book is about, so why don't we both find out? I'll read from the flap jacket. The story of a father raising his three children in 1960s Minnesota, 11-year-old Reuben Land, has little doubt that miracles happen all around us and that it's up to us to make of it what we will. Reuben was born with no air in his lungs, and it was only when his father, Jeremiah, picked him up and commanded him to breathe that his lungs filled. Reuben struggles with debilitating asthma from then on, making him a boy who knows firsthand that life is a gift and also one who suspects that his father is touched by God and can overturn the laws of nature. The quiet Midwestern life of the lands is upended when Davy, the oldest son, kills two marauders who have come to harm the family. Unlike his father, he is not content to leave all matters of justice in God's hands. The morning of his sentencing, Davy, a hero to some, a cold-blooded murderer to others, escapes from his cell, and the land set out to search for him. Their journey is touched by serendipity and the kindness of strangers, among them a free spirit named Roxana who offers them a place to stay during a blizzard and winds up providing them with something far more permanent. Meanwhile, a federal agent is trailing the lands, convinced they know of Davy's whereabouts. With Jeremiah at the helm, the family covers territory far more extraordinary than even the Badlands, where they search for Davy from their Airstream trailer. It seems like a very male-dominated book, other than this Roxana, but um, I'm going to give it a try. It is a little after five. Bill is downstairs watching some television, and I think I'm going to go down there just to be near him, because while he's home, I do... Uh, like to spend time with him. It's just, I don't want to watch television. I want to read this, but I'm really good at blocking out the television. I have inherited this gift from my mother. There were seven of us kids and she didn't hear a thing we said to her while she was reading and she read a lot. Good morning. It is Tuesday, March 10th, and I am 50 eight pages into Peace Like a River, and oh my gosh, it is so good. I did not want to put this book down last night. Wow, this is, the writing is wonderful. The story is wonderful. Um, I think I said something yesterday about it being male dominated, but there is a sister. So there's the older brother, Davey, and then there's our main character who's narrating it, and then his sister who's quite a character, and then um, the dad seems to be pretty awesome. There was a mom, I won't go into detail about that because I don't wanna spoil anything, but let's just say when I was reading this in bed, I gasped out loud when I found out what happened to the mom. <laughs> but um, it's gonna be really hard for me not to read until the end of the day. But I just wanted to pop in here really quickly telling you I am loving this. And uh, this morning while I was, I say, putting on my powders and potions, um, I listened more to the Dutch house and oh, it just, when I originally listened to it, it was back in December. And 
I am just loving the Dutch house. I kind of love listening to it now, knowing how it ends. Um, it is a weird book in a way. It's like normal weird, which I feel like Ann Patchett is normal weird or she's weird normal. But anyway, I thought I'd pop in here really quickly. Wish you a good morning and I'll see you guys later. Hello, it is March 12th. March 12th? <laughs> March 12th and um, I am in my car and I had to go to the dentist in the city <laughs> and I don't actually live like by city cities as some of you may think of cities but um it's like it's nearly an hour away so I listened to more of the Dutch house while I was driving and then uh on the way home um we live near a lake and I'm currently parked on the far end of the lake and just I've been just sitting here and listening to uh the Dutch house some more so it's a 10 hour audiobook just shy of 10 hours and I am um I think I have four hours left in it it's just it's just so good this time around I think I'm even enjoying it more than the first time and I really enjoyed the Dutch house the first time but knowing how it ends and listening to it now, and I'm also appreciating more this time the genius of Tom Hanks being the narrator of this audiobook. Because um, the first time I listened to it, it felt a little strange to have Tom Hanks read an audiobook to me. But this time I think I'm kind of getting the genius of it. I also wanted to let you know that on Monday night, I finished Peace Like a River. Remember in the vlog, I said something, it was in the morning and I said, it's gonna be really hard not to read this book during the day today because my discipline is to wait till like four or five each day before I start reading or else I would just read all day, every day. And um, well, my discipline went out the window because I was just so engrossed in the story and the book did not disappoint. It is a five-star book for me, my first five-star book of March. I just think the way it's written is, I love that type of writing and the story itself, there aren't a ton of huge plot twists, but the story was so engaging with me that, or to me, that I just wanted to take that that journey of the book in the shortest amount of time possible. So I ended up like, I was determined I wasn't going to bed Monday night. I wasn't going to sleep on Monday night until I was done with the book. And there is a beauty in finishing a book in a day because you don't get caught up with that off time from a book where you, you think, oh, I wonder, I wonder how it's going to end or I wonder what's gonna happen next. When you read, you know, um, I don't remember how long it is, maybe just over 300 pages. You know, when you read that in a, in a sitting, basically, you're very present for that reading. You're not trying to think ahead too much because you're, you are focused on what you are reading at that moment. And there is a beauty in that because you're not thinking ahead and you are, you are going on this journey as if there is a storyteller and you are sitting in front of the storyteller and, and listening to her story and, or in this case, his story. I, 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 that is a big reason I like to read a book in a short amount of time. If you don't like, um, if you don't enjoy literary fiction, if that's a turn off to you, then you're probably not gonna like this book. Um, if you are uncomfortable with the idea of miracles due to a uh, divine presence, then you might not like this book. But I just, it was totally for me. I just really, really enjoyed it. So. I recommend it. Anyway, I should really get on home. We're going to go out to eat tonight with our neighbors. So I would like to get home and get some things done. I really don't want to leave the lake, but I do want to get home to my husband. <laughs> so anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hi guys. It is Friday. I'm so happy this week is coming to an official close. It's been quite a week in the world. Um, quite a week. I, as you know, live in the middle of nowhere and 
sometimes I find that very inconvenient, but when given what's going on um, health-wise with the coronavirus um, in our country, worldwide, like being in the middle of nowhere is kind of a super place to be right now. <laughs> so no complaints here, but I am acutely aware that um, it is not the same for so many people. Their lives are really being changed. So I hope you are healthy and taking care of yourself and those you love. And let's hope this turns around really soon. But what do we do when we feel anxious about things we can't control? Well, we read. We're readers. So anyway, this week I am almost done with the Dutch house for my book club next Tuesday. I have about a half an hour to go on that. And I just need to say, when I originally listened to it back in October of 2019, I gave it five stars. This time, while I'm listening to it, I think I love it even more, knowing how it ends, and it is keeping its five-star review. That said, I have read other people's reviews on this book um, since, you know, between the first reading and the second reading, and I acknowledge some of their criticisms. But for me, personally, my, my philosophy is a book does not have to be perfect to get five-star reviews. Um, it, it, the five-star is more how I feel. It's, it's did this book just uh, draw me in? Did it just speak to my soul and my heart? And, and I, I, I just, The Dutch House, I just think is Anne Patchett's best book yet. And I have read quite a few of her books, not all of them, but I need to make an Anne Patchett video because I have really strong opinions. I love her. <laughs> I really do. And, um, but anyway, uh, I, I think it's her strongest book yet. Um, if you want to read another Ann Patchett book, I would recommend one that I don't think people talk a lot about. It was her very first book, The Patron Saint of Liars. Now, some of Ann Patchett's books, the end, dis the ends of the books disappoint me. And that is true with the patron saint of liars, but I still love that book. It was really good. So if you're looking for a place to start with Anne Patchett, uh, that's a fun place to start. I really think so. If you do try that, let me know what you think of it. But anyway, it was a good reading week. Even with the husband home, I got four books done since last Saturday and today's Friday. So, um, I finished, uh, Nine Perfect Strangers and gave it three stars. It is a light read, so if you don't enjoy light reading, you'll probably wanna skip that one. Um, it is not my favorite Leanne Moriarty book. I much prefer Big Little Lies and What Alice Forgot to it, but for what it is, I think it deserved three stars personally. It is not all that highly rated on Goodreads. Um, and like I told you, my niece Lindsay gave it a two, so take that for what you will. And then I read The Writing Life by Annie Dillard and I still haven't decided how I'm going to score that. So by the end of March, when I wrap everything up for the month, I'll have to make a decision by then. But again, that book is really just for people who are interested in, I think this, maybe I'm wrong, but to me, I think only people who are really interested in writing or how authors think, I don't think other people would really enjoy that book. Um, it's basically essays of her philosophies on the writing life. And then I read Peace Like a River, which was definitely a five-star book in my books. I've loved that. And I've already given an explanation as to what that book is about during this vlog. And then um, I am just like a half an hour away from finishing The Dutch House. And I am going to keep that at its five star. So it was a really good reading week. My husband's home and I got four books done. Like that's really good. <laughs> so um, I'm happy. But anyway, um, I, I need to close out this vlog and I'm actually really excited. I think the video I want to start on next will be next week's video. And if, if I keep the topic, what I'm thinking it's gonna be, I'm gonna be really excited about it. So because I'll have to do some research and I love researching when I'm obsessed with a certain topic and and uh, 
I'll leave it there. But anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. If you have made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like these kinds of videos, please give this a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you next week.